All right, welcome back. So um, last time we saw how we could do the mechanics of replacing some text with an emoji and it was pretty straightforward. It was just search backwards to see what the text was and if the text was appropriate or in our case something like oops, uh, let me get the cursor to where it needs to be something like shark we could then just do emoji replace insert and it replaces it. So now we want to move to making it <clears throat> automatic to make it happen just as we're typing. So that's going to be this part of the video and the way we do that uh, are with hooks. And what hooks are in Emacs, there's ways of attaching functionality to things that happen. You can kind of think of them like in GUI program, like events, um, like uh, or you know, related to events, like when the mouse clicks or when this dialogue is entered or when you type into this entry field. Um, and Emacs has lots of hooks that can be um, that you can attach functionality to. So for example, one example, I'm just going to open under the temp directory just a little file here. And let's put some text in the file. Let's say this is a secret text file. It has a lot of secret information, whatever. Um, and so what we're going to do here is um, let's write a little function. What we're going to do is we're going to want a hook so it'll automatically change all the occurrences of secret to something else when you save the file because you don't want those two secrets to be permanently on this. So let's write a function that does the change. Let's call it um, hook example. Uh, let's, call, oh, let's call it redact secrets. And I'm just in fundamental mode. Um, Emacs Lisp mode, just because we're mostly typing in Emacs Lisp. Making it interactive just for the time being. And so what we're going to do is we're going to do, we'll go to character zero, and we'll just test this. Skip that. Forgot that, so um, things were messed up there. So now if we do redact our secrets, it just moves up to character zero. Let's this yeah, well, let's save excursion. So that way it'll restore our cursor at the end. And what we'll do here is we'll replace string. And we'll replace the string secret with redacted. So now if we're down here and we say redact our secrets, all of those occurrences of secret are changed to redacted and our cursor is restored or our point is restored because we, um, we saved the excursion. And I just didn't undo because, just because. Now, if we save this file, nothing's going to happen. It's going to just all have secret in it, no, you know, no big deal. Um, if we want this to happen automatically, we have to add a hook. So we can add a hook, and the hook we're going to save is, um, is the before save hook. Uh, there's also an after save hook, um, and the before save hook should be before the save actually happens. And what we want to do before the save is we're going to run redact our secrets, and um, and nil and t, I just forget what those are for when I looked up the function. Uh, well, actually, let's, um, let's look it up. hf, let's look up the function, add hook. Um, so depth and local um, when we add the hook. So the place where the function is added depends on depth. The default is 0. Um, and so I guess this is where when you, you know, you can add multiple hooks. Um, so by adding the depth, you can decide should this be after the other hooks or before if you keep track of the depth. Um, now let's look at the other thing, the local. Local, if non-nil, um, uh, make the hook buffer local rather than 
global. So um, modified looks buffer or local value or this global value. All right, so I guess it looks like, um, it sounds like it makes that. So should this be just for this buffer or for all the buffers? And we can test this a little bit. So what we're going to do here is, let me just go to one window here. We can add this hook, and I'm going to put in some code just so I don't forget it. Before I say a book, and that's going to be redact secrets. Um, basically, this way we can remove the hook later on. And I'm just going to put the comments here just so that if we happen to save and load this file later, it won't um, it won't automatically run those. So right now, if we save our file, nothing happens. I'm just going to put a space in here so there's a change. But now we're going to add our hook. And our hook has been added, so now if we save the file, Notice that before it saves, it made those changes. So that's what hooks let you do. It lets you modify. It lets you um, it lets you make the actions happen when things occur. So we're going to go to another file in temp, H example two, and I'm going to put in the secret, secret, secret and then save this, and notice that it did not change these, and that's because, so indeed, that's because this was true, um, or, you know, T. If we just didn't have this, or we had this at nil, then this hook would have happened also in all our other buffers. We don't want that. But here, on the other hand, if we're in here, it'll keep changing secret to redacted every time we save. Now, we want to get rid of the hook, we can just remove the hook, <coughs> and now if we save it, hmm, um, oh, right, um, redact secrets. Um, little problem there, I have to, you know, pull the exact function out, so that should work better. Redact secrets. Let's remove that. Let's remove. It's possible that I messed up and I added the hook under another name as well in my not paying attention. Yeah, so I'm not going to worry about that. The remove hook does work. We'll show that in the other exam in, in our actual real example. So anyway, that's how hooks work. And if we want more information, you can look in the eList manual. Um, so I just did Control H I to bring up the info system and I just search for ELISP and I type hook and it's to search for hook control s search for hook and this will list my standard hooks and you'll see you know there, there, there are tons of these hooks um, <coughs> change major mode hook um, delete frame functions focus echo area you know, like kill buffer hook so lots of different things that you can um, you know, post command, pre commands, whatever, lots of different things that you can attach hooks to. Um, what we're going to do though is we're going to use the after change functions hook. Um, and that's going to, if we look at our change hooks, the after change function hook, this is functions to be called after Emacs modifies a buffer. So whenever the buffer is changed, then it's going to pull any of these hooks. And that's going to be when we can actually see about um, do we have to insert the emoji. So um, if this for this particular hook, you'll notice that each function receives three arguments: the beginning and the end of the region that was just changed, and the length. So these are going to be the parameters that we have to add to our um, function that's going to replace the emoji. Because if it's going to be automatically called by the hook, we have to give it what it expects. So let's start making these changes. So we're going to have to give this the beginning, the end, and the length. We don't have to use all of them, but we do have to have them. And then what we're going to do is we're going to have to grant to do a test to see where we're at. And that test is going to be, so let's, let me just grab the character, excuse me, the character of the, la of the change. You know, what, what just changed? Um, and it turns out what just changed was, um, you know, 
the last character you typed in. So was that a space? So we can say if string equals s to be a space, if the la if s we just grabbed, which is the buffer substring which of the last change, if that last change was a space, well now we've got to do our emoji replace. So I'm just going to let me just come down to here and let me just reindent the region. Um, and everything else should be the same. Um, because if it was a space, we're going to do the same operation. So let's run that. And that should be all good to go. But what we're going to need to do to actually have this work, to really do this, is we are going to need um, our hooks. So we're going to have to, and I'm going to put this in comments. And basically, it's going to be, we'll add the hook, so then any time a change happens to the buffer, we're going to call that emoji replace insert, and it's going to do its thing. And we're also going to have a remove hook. And it's emoji, yeah, sorry, emoji replace insert. When I originally wrote it, I just wrote emoji replace. So I'm going to save our buffer, so save everything so we're all good. And notice that if I do elephant, nothing happens. Now let's add our hook, and let's see if it works. Still doesn't work. <laughs> um, so let's see what we have as a mistake. Um, run that. After change functions, emoji replace insert. Um, oh, this might be messing things up here because this is no longer interactive. Remove anything we have. Let's add that back in. And the elephant ran into the squid. That's odd. Um, thought I had squid. Oh, that is not continuing to work. So let's see what happened. Let's uh, let's remove this. Try this again. Add that. Okay. The ghost talked to the elephant. I don't know what happened just before, but we seem to be working. Um, but that's it. And so. Wasn't that bad? And now we have, in any buffer we want, we can just add the hook or we can make it universal um, and it will just replace our emoji. So what we're going to do is let's remove this hook. And now it no longer does its thing. So that's basically it. Let me just clean up this stuff at the bottom. Um, and what we're going to do next is we're going to talk about how do we do this as an overlay? So instead of doing this where it replaces elephant with the elephant, like we, we saw just a minute ago when the hook was active, so it'll actually overlay it instead so it doesn't really change the buffer contents, because that's the other time you might want to use it. After that, we'll look at turning this into a minor mode. All right, so hope you all enjoy.